Mm. Hi, welcome to Something Out There with Alan Steinfeld and Val Tagini. Val Tagini. And um, today we thought we'd talk about the idea of different belief systems, worldviews, how people start to change the way they perceive reality. And that usually happens because of an experience. Do you want to talk about what happened to you, Val? How, who, who you were before you had your upgrade? <laughs> uh, well, I, I always was connected to ETs without knowing it. They came to visit me several times when I was a kid around like the age of 13 to 14. And then when, and then when I was around 16, but, um, but I didn't know that they were ETs. I did and I didn't. I kind of just kind of blew it off. And I think a lot of people do that unless they've, um, unless they really felt like it was a, a true presence or they, you know, some of their friends are into ETs. But most people have no idea that they well, are, are dealing with ETs. Well, you blew it off because you didn't have a context to put the experience in, right? Exactly. And I think a lot of people go through that. Yeah. 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 So and how I, did you finally realize, well, what happened to you that you blew off? What was it that? I think I talked about this in the, the first one, oh. um, the first podcast, but I was um, in my bedroom in the evening going to sleep. And then this really, really bright light in my neighbor's backyard. It was so bright. It was beaming through my window. And I'm like, what is that? And, you know, I live, I lived in the suburbs of New Jersey. So I, it was very uncommon for a very bright light to be coming through the window that way. And so when I looked out the window, it was, I noticed that it wasn't in, it wasn't even near our house. It was, it was in my friend's backyard. I'm like, are they having a party? I don't hear any music. I remember even opening the window and, uh, and then finally I saw this light kind of a ball of light travel up into the sky and then it zoomed right in front of my window and the ball of light was like the size of a bozu ball Are you familiar with that the exercise balls the ones that you can sit on no. not really <laughs> but i can imagine it so yeah, how big was it was it about, it's about six feet no no much smaller it's about this big mm -hmm. um and um and anyway, so, and then I noticed, I was like, wow. And, and it was like, I was frozen. And it's only, you only become frozen because their magnetic field and vibration is so high that you not really, you don't recognize it in your body. So you freeze. Do you think you became frozen because of something the ETs did to you as well? Or was it just your own reaction? Well, I don't know for sure, but I, I know that there was that contact was the it was a, a sort of initiation on this plane. Mm -hmm. um, I there who knows? I don't remember any any um, ET dreams or visions or anything like that. But that was vivid. I was awake. That was vivid, and I could feel the energy, and I knew it wasn't from this world. Because well, you knew it then, but wait, just before you go further, you knew it then, but you didn't have a place to put the experience, so you... Yeah, so I just ignored it. I told my mom, I ran into my mom's bedroom, and I said, Mom, there's a UFO outside. And she's like, yeah, okay, go back to bed. <laughs> but did you just think you were making it up, or but you knew, or did you know it was absolutely real? I mean, that's... Well, the next day, it was a school night, so I went to go, I went and to look at my neighbor at school. And I looked at them, I was like, are they different? <laughs> are they different? And the funny thing is their father's name was, uh, or his name is, nickname is Lucky. Uh -huh. And the day of my graduation, uh, high school graduation, he was the one that gave me my diploma. Mm. Lucky and, for you. And lucky for me. <laughs> wait, wait, how old were you when you saw the light? What, how, what was your age? I, was, I see, you know, it's not even like a, a very, I can't even just, it's like it either, either was 13 or 14. Okay. And then okay. I was, and then when I was around 16, my sister had a blowing in the ear and she always thought she had ghosts in her bedroom. And mm -hmm. then the next night I was like, Oh, that's a ghost. You know, we're all like, yeah, that's a ghost. My mom, 
it was always the ladies, you know. I think the 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 men in the house they were like, "What are you talking about?" Mm -hmm. But us three were like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's a ghost." Next day, same exact thing happened to me, and I was like, "Oh, that's what it was." And mm -hmm. and it wasn't like it's not like a blowing there, like it's more like. And you were sleeping. So almost about to go to sleep. And you've just felt that thing. Do you, do yeah. You, and my sister doesn't... felt the same way. And then, or was I sleeping? No, this time I was sleeping. This time I was sleeping. The other time I was almost you about think to think that's an ET signal of something? So at Colin Andrews event, uh -huh. I was sitting on the at the end of the aisle. The one we went to where you talked yes. about crop circles? Okay. Right. And and then all of a sudden I feel this. And it was nobody was sitting next to me. And I'm like, oh, you're showing me that that was like you when I was a kid. Right. So that was a confirmation for you, right? Yes. So wow. um, but the okay. thing that I wanna, I mean, that's that's a kind of awakening of moments, but how do we integrate? And I'm asking myself because I didn't have those experiences, but I did have strange dreams. This little being was put in my hands in a dream state. It seems like a dream state, but th those experiences are so different than this ordinary reality we are living in where, where no one really talks about that. And it's, and, and those, they take place in another reality. I'm just wondering, I'm asking myself and you and everyone listening, how do we integrate these really strange experiences into this reality or into accepting the fact that they're real? Well, how did you, Alan? How what? How did you do it? Well, I'm still doing it. I haven't really totally do done it. That's why I like to keep talking about it. If anyone's out there, I'm also on the chat, um, has some ideas of how they've done it, how they've integrated. I mean, I do it by talking about it, by realizing that this world that we've been told is the material world is not, is not the uh, only reality that, you know, dream states and altered states of consciousness may be including a bigger world, a bigger reality, and to also see how limited we are in um, trusting our cultural conditioning. You know, in my talks, I just did a talk last night here. I'm actually here in Mexico. That's why you hear the rooster crowing in the background sometimes. But um, I gave a talk about um, perception and consciousness and ET stuff. And I show this video where these guys are playing basketball and then this gorilla walks across the floor. It's on YouTube. It was a cognition experiment that they was done at Harvard and people don't see the gorilla because I tell them to look at the people passing, passing the basketball. It's a famous uh, cognition test. And, um, when I when they stop counting, I show the video again. They see the gorilla, but they don't see it. Yes, I love that video. And so that's because I programmed them. I told them what to look at, mm -hmm. and they don't see what they haven't been told to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's true. Our education, our upbringing, our um, whole programming is to look at certain realities and we've been conditioned by that and not to see the things we haven't been told to see. So that's happening all the time. That's that video example of the basketball game. And you can look at that on YouTube. I think it's called, I think it's called um, misdirection. That's one name for it. You can see that when we're not directed to see something, we don't see it. So imagine like, you know, 20, 30 years of upbringing where you're just not told to see things. So these ETs, whatever they are, might be right here, but we haven't been developed in our awareness to see what's right here. And then sometimes you see a light or a flash or uh, um, 
an idea comes to you and you just don't know where it comes from, but it is coming from somewhere and we have to shift out of what we thought was true into the bigger reality of what really might be true. So this is what I'm trying to do for myself, overcome my conditioning right. about the nature of reality and try to step into a bigger realm. Yeah. Of course, people do that with psychedelics, plant medicine. Yeah. And that's one way to do it. But I think we don't have to rely on that. I think we can yeah. start to overcome our programming by just talking to each other like this. Yes. And also practicing uh, mindfulness and uh, you know, reading, reading new books, watching the history channel. As, um, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Uh, ancient no. ancient yeah. aliens and um you know we it's interesting you know we don't really have that much uh, media programming out right now but you know there are some certain documentaries and even watching films really help you open your mind and your field and your consciousness to to these kinds of experiences but i feel like a lot of people that are actually watching already did have these experiences and I think one, you're right. I've, yeah, and I think I think the only thing that they're wondering is how do I fit in? How do how could I be safe, stuff? secure, and predictable? How can I and just normal fit? and be normal in the world when I'm? Yeah, having these I I never had that problem of wanting to be normal. I always thought that I was a little different, and Same. you know, I never felt part of a social reality. Same. Did you? Same no. for you? Yeah, I just talked about that this morning. Oh, I never, really? I never felt like I fit in anywhere I went. I really? still don't in a way. I really, I really, really don't. I wonder um, who, are, who are all those people who thought they fit in? I just wonder who those people are. <laughs> I talk to a lot of people who say the same thing as you, totally. that they never felt they fit in. And then they, um, but also I want to say a comment by Omar. He says, I think it's called Pavlovian perceptions, means conditioned perceptions, you know, Pavlov dogs and where they were, you know, that story where Pavlov, the psychologist, um, he started behavioral psychology. And every time he rang a bell, he'd feed the dog. So the dog got conditioned to uh, hearing the bell and thinking it'd be fed. And one time he rang the bell and didn't feed the dog. The dog got very upset because there was no food because he was conditioned. The dog was conditioned to. The bell to rang. Eat. Yeah. And so we're conditioned to, to be mm -hmm. normal yeah. in that sense and to ha With, have norm normal expectations. Without really knowing, you know, it's, you can't blame yourself. You can't kick right. yourself. You know, you, you, we really don't know that we are being conditioned until the one day you realize that you are. And that's a, that's an awakening in itself. Mm, that's, and, that's a smart comment. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yes. Very intelligent. And, and I think I really feel like, you know, when I had those experiences, I'm kind of glad I didn't go too deep into them because what happens is you really kind of, lose sense of your own reality and you're really you're placing so much focus and energy on to this alternative reality and well, then I, I think we have to have a foot in both worlds oh sorry i didn't mean to cut you off what were you going to say yes, of course. i mean that's what i do now however as a child mm. it's difficult because right. you're still you're first of all your chakras are still developing and especially at the age of 14, you're only in your second chakra. Mm. So after that, um, you know, you really want to kind of establish yourself. And if you have children that are already having contact, just let them let don't. The first thing I think is people shouldn't be in fear. Mm -hmm. Do not tell them to be in fear of their contact. Mm -hmm. Always empower them, even if it is a, a not so pleasant experience. Always empower them. Always give them the power and tell them. I agree. Oh, you're I much agree. stronger than those beings, or you are. You are. You know. Oh, we're equal. We're equal. Yes. We're on a different vibration. Um, but I think, though, I, people should welcome the experience because it's an upgrade of awareness. 
Mm. And I mean, I liked also what you just said that just knowing your conditioning, that you are conditioned is already an initiation and an awakening to something else. But I think, and what I try to do is keep um, my feet in both worlds to know that those, that there is a conditioning, but also we have to pretend to fit in. We can't, if you're too outside the system, then people can't relate to you. So. Yes. And then you can't relate to the world and then you kind of feel lost. And even right. more, and yeah. even more mm -hmm. isolated. Right. I mean, but we can't deny the other reality either. That's the no, case. no. It's not in denial. See, the funny thing is, I don't know when you were a teenager. You know, but mm -hmm. as a teenager, I feel like every teenager smokes uh, marijuana at some. Point. Yeah, I tried that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and you know, it's not like you're. It's not like you're reaching multi-dimensional realities, but I remember when I smoked marijuana, I always became psychic. And yeah, am I, I but I am psychic. <laughs> well, you are we're all naturally psychic. When I did yeah, ecstasy yeah. for the first time, it opened my third eye and I could just see and read people, and it's kind of stayed with me. I don't recommend that because I think no. the like, well, if you want to people can do that. But I think the upgrade of the vibration of the planet is opening our third eyes and our psychic abilities. I don't even think it's, I mean, at this point, I really feel like the, like you said, the planet is vibrationally opening us, our chakras up. And so we don't really need to do that anymore. I agree. I agree. I just want to comment. Omar is listening. Okay. He says, we're told not to talk about certain things, even if they're true, it takes years to be confident in change. That's right. And I think we need a support system of people talking about this, uh, meetups, uh, just watching things on YouTube where you can start to relate to other people's experiences. Because if you think you're the only one with the experience, you might doubt your psychology, your sanity. And yeah. And you I become think, isolated. Yeah. And I think the big problem with our culture is that we've been taught not to trust our own minds, not to trust our own awareness. I mean, this is the fault of um, modern psychological thinking is that, I mean, it's helpful. Psychology is definitely helpful in knowing yourselves, but it also puts a limitation on, on what we can know, what we're allowed to know. So that's the whole idea of being in both worlds again. We yeah, I mean, trust our minds. Trust our minds. The thing is, you know, we're we are we're born, and the first teachers are our parents, and our parents are teaching us the basics, right? Uh, how to go, how to go to the bathroom in a toilet, how to eat, right. how to speak, and then we go to school, mm -hmm. and then the school teaches us how to read and write, how to deal with the system. And so that indoctrination is so strong. And then, of course, there's other people that are religious. And that indoctrination is even stronger, yeah. which kind of boxes your, your thought patterns, your ability to think out of this box. And then all of a sudden, if, if that experience does happen to you, you become terrified. The funny thing is I grew up going to a public school and, and uh, Roman Catholic. And yet I still wasn't afraid, but I feel like when we are not afraid, it's only because we are tuning into our higher selves. Mm -hmm. And well, the yeah. key is, mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like because of all this conditioning that we're going through, and I was conditioned um, for sure, but I was always rebellious, naturally mm -hmm. rebellious against the school system, against any system. Mm -hmm. Any indoctrination. I even I I I hated history books because I knew they were lying to us. I, I love history, though. I thought there was like you know a whole sense of reality. But yes, well, there is a lie history. on some level. I loved history because it gave us a certain sense of where we came from. Mm -hmm. But I but I had a real issue with what they were saying. Uh, mm -hmm. Not even researching that if it was true or not. I just knew it wasn't true. So how do you? Then, Break out of all your conditioning is what then? I want to know. Then? How did, how did you break out of your conditioning? Later or that during that time? 
Well, as you evolved, as you so woke the up. First, the first thing that really kind of shook me, I mean, I always had a real issue with the government. I always, I never voted. I, I you know, I was always a, re a rebellious person. I mean, the first time was September 11th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really when I woke up to what is true and what isn't true. What are they not telling us? And then after my- Well, I just want to comment on that because that sort of was an awakening for me, not 9-11, because I'm a little older, but the JFK assassination. Yeah, was, well, there you go. Well, you I were was in there. elementary school and they said the president was assassinated. And I said, does that mean he was killed? I mean, why were they using the word assassinated? And I, that was a really, that was a word I didn't understand at the time. What How does that- you? Mean? Does that mean someone is purposely doing that? That was, and that was the beginning for a lot of people of a understanding that there was another level of just political realities happening. Yes. Us, that um, didn't make sense in the world we were being fed uh, by our media, just like 9-11 yeah. stuff didn't make sense. Yeah. What's about, going on behind the scenes, you know? Yes. That was, so these conspiracies and I'm not a total conspiracy person, but yes, they obviously exist. Um, well, but, UFOs and aliens are conspiracies. Well, they're conspiracies. The suppression of them are conspiracies. The reality is that they exist, but no, but just getting back to the yeah. idea of these, like you said, this political media um, um, things that don't connect, they don't make sense, actually in a way is a good thing because it does start to wake people up. Unfortunately, we're not getting the truth, which is the downside of that. The other side is, well, maybe we're never getting the truth, right? Well, yeah, they're constantly spoon feeding us, you know, the dumbed down version basically, or they're a completely different version. Right. So, well, but continuing so, with your story. Yeah. Sure. So, you know, I think, I think, I think a lot of people could relate to this, but I mean, my awakening was backwards because what happened was I had a Kundalini awakening and then I started to go down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Right. Which I didn't know what the rabbit hole was for you. Yeah, so usually it's the other way around. You go down the rabbit hole, and then you have this, you you pop, and you you know, and you, you have the awakening. So mine was backwards. However, during this rabbit hole search, I was I was addicted to YouTube, completely <laughs> addicted to YouTube and well, alternative media. What made you go down the rabbit hole? Was that that Kundalini awakening? Well, I just wanted to know the truth. But was it before your Kundalini awakening no, or after? No, it was after. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So and something then, got activated in your brain, in your awareness, because you had this like yeah. intense body uh, activation. Yes. Okay. And so, and the uh, and afterwards, while I was going down the rabbit hole, I started everything that I could relate to was I started to open up, and I, I rem you know speaking of JFK pre kundalini awakening i remember there's this um this comparison of jfk and and lincoln right and right. how like their secretary's names was kennedy and his was lincoln and all their birthdays and everything was all right lincoln. one was elected in 1960 one was elected in 1860 i mean yeah. there's so many coincidences yeah. yes it's a point to a bigger reality that's right. And so the the matrix was kind of uh, intertwined uh, between these two beings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which could even mean maybe it was the same being. Or, But it also shows that time is not what we think. Reality is not what we think. Yes. There's loops of time sequences, time yes. patterns, there's synchronicities. And it cannot be explained by the reality that we've been condition to think yes it's yes. true yeah so when i first saw that mm -hmm. i i was pondering so much and thinking what mm -hmm. how is this possible and then all of a sudden you know the kundalini awakening happened like three years later and and then 
and then all of a sudden I, I was on YouTube and I was convinced of looking for the truth and I wanted to know more of the truth about the US history and all this stuff. And I don't know if you know this, um, Andy, um, gosh, Howard Zinn, People's History of the United States. That's no. a good alternative history book, Howard well, Zinn. But yeah, that's what we, is that what you were talking about? No, I was, I was, I stumbled across um, I, I forget his last name, his, um, Andy something. And anyway, I don't even know if it's on anymore because I think they blocked it, but he started talking about time travel. Oh, and I, oh, oh. And I was really interested in that because of what, of Kennedy and, and, mm. uh, Lincoln. And mm. so I was like, Oh, and then, so he time traveled back into his, where his dad was part of the CIA. Right. I, I, yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. I don't quite go along with that guy, but I mean, well, I have my own. I but, know it yeah, doesn't. It doesn't matter. It just it's what opens something up in me. Yeah. Right. And right. then, and I don't even know if it's true or not, but it doesn't matter. It oh, it definitely opened something up in me. And then I, I realized he what he was saying was that he he met George Washington and he said that he was actually an illuminated being. And I was like, oh yes, I totally resonate with that. With what kind of being? An illuminated being. He's very psychic. Oh, okay. Intuitive. Um, he could. He's a visionary, and that resonated with me. And well, that's and I, kind of the seed about what's possible for you, for us, for all of us. Yes. And then he talked about the. He saw. He met Obama when he was a. He was a in his twenties, and that he was going to be the future president. And, and then he met ETs that that were humanoid. And I was like, oh, interesting. And so this, this, even if the story was completely made up, it- Well, I don't know if it's completely made up, but I think parts of it may be embellished. I mean, I don't know, but people- We don't I, know, it doesn't matter. I, mean, I can question someone else's experience. And also if it activated you to think more and to explore that, then it had its point. Its purpose, yes. And that's what I'm trying to say is that even if the stories are not true, if it resonates with you on some sort of level, even if I'd never even had those kind of experiences, yeah. it made it made sense for me. I said time travel is possible, yeah. and it's done with some sort of extraterrestrial technology. Right, right. I and, mean, who's to say what's true? I have my own yeah. limits, maybe about what's true but maybe that's also a programming right maybe yeah. it's true maybe it's all true and i'm not um uh unconditioned enough to buy you know we're still even when we wake up there's levels and levels of conditioning i always but, say it's like the peeling of the onion Right. So Omar, our good friend Omar, who's following the conversation says, do you think that part of the fact that people don't realize their truth is mainly because of the indoctrination program of the automatic lack of self-belief? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and that's what Kundalini is, a, is all about, is awakening to your true self. But, but, but before I talk, but we say that, I, yes, absolutely. But this lack of self-belief, you see, we're taught what to believe from the time, you know, we can speak and then we go to school and we're taught mm -hmm. that other people know more than us. And we're taught not to trust what we know and to tune into our own spiritual awareness. And so we're taught to ignore our own sense of truth and believe mm -hmm. teachers or media yeah, or politicians yeah. or religious leaders yeah. and, yeah. That's and like they know say. more, mm -hmm. but they, yeah. don't they don't really know. I mean, they probably know less because they're only teaching or, or tell or what they've been programmed for mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And I just so, posted, I just posted something on my Facebook page about, how doctors never study nutrition in right. medical school. That is shocking. Absolutely. They never study nutrition. They never study alternative approaches. It's either this way, yes. the only way. And, and, they, and they only study the part of the body that is their, that is their um, practice. And right. so, and I feel like that's, that's how we're taught. 
we're taught in compartments, you know, rather than, you know, everything is crisscrossed, everything is connected. And if you, if you say that Earth is not connected to the rest of the universe and there's no other life on, on, in the rest of the universe, you're completely boxing us in. And that's what, how... Well, it's a symptom of the disconnection. That yes. is exactly right. Just going back to the idea of specialists, you know, they focus on this. Oh, it, 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 it must be this problem in the person. And they ignore the whole person. That's why... Uh, indigenous medicine, Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. they don't label this an illness because it's all specific for the person. I mean, when I was studying Chinese medicine, because I do acupuncture and herbology, the biggest joke was if you have a headache, you treat the head. That was a joke, you know, <laughs> and, and my Chinese teacher would start to laugh. You know, you, if, you, if, if the leaves are damaged, you have to treat the roots. You That's know, right. you don't treat the leaves. You have to treat the cause, not the symptom. That's right. You have, a, a, you know, it's like the symptom, and this is what's wrong with Western medicine. If you just treat the symptom and ignore the cause, the symptoms are going to come back. So yes, yes, and this, you know. And that's the big thing. What you're saying, the separateness, the specialness, the specialty uh, understanding and the disconnection from the universe. And like, and I like the point you brought up to say that the earth is the only place that has life is a part of that um, segregation of ideas and to think we're disconnected from the rest of the universe that- right. Because we are galactic. We are connected to the cosmos. Yes, yes. You know, people always ask me, where are you from? I said, well, I'm an earthling right now. <laughs> and but maybe not even that. <laughs> well, I'm living here. Um, but the thing is, it, once we start to separate ourselves, you know, the sense of, the sense of duality brings in fear. And then all of a sudden, once we, we have this fear, then we are afraid of even explore, exploring, exploring any kind of other reality. And so there, there, are, there are people that are so smart and intelligent and, you know, they're teaching at Harvard University and all these Ivy League schools. And yet I think they're the dumbest people on the planet. Because Why? They're, because they're just robots. They just read what they're been taught and that's about it they're just it's just like they're a program in a robot a robot and a her you know it's just like right. a so we a have computer. to look at the, the the um levels of conditioning we're conditioned by our parents because they don't know any better because they were conditioned then we're conditioned by our political yes. systems our media you know when you're media. when i was brought up watching television you know i just yes thought that was what was true. You know, what the news, what ABC, yeah. CBS, uh, NBC was saying was yes. the truth about yes. the world. Yes. And it was a, a conditioning that, that people still don't realize that the news is conditioning them. Oh, it's one of the worst. I remember, I remember when I was a kid in the mm -hmm. 80s, that, that um, group of people that went into space. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a teacher in the, in the, in the um, spacecraft, mm -hmm. and and it blew up. Go oh, right, that was tri quite traumatic. Yes, I could. I was, you know, I always loved watching those rocket ships right. going. And right. you know, I was young. I don't remember what year was that. Was nineteen eighty four or nineteen eighty seven? No, eighty six. Eighty six. January. Okay. I remember actually where I was. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that really impacted me. I said, mm -hmm. how could that happen? And I was thinking like, that rocket ship is so, it looks so old. <laughs> right, compared and to like the other. But and, and I'm thinking, how could this be? How could, how could they die just like that? And, mm -hmm. and the way they showed it, they kept showing it, they kept showing, you know, the yeah. rocket ship going up. And I'm like, and it just kind of brought up all these emotions and fear. I'm like, why would they? And then I'm like, I, I have to shut this off. And I, mm. and I was like, and then of course it brought so much fear into me. Like, do I, cause I always wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> well, well, you are already an astronaut. But <laughs> no, wait, I don't want to be an astronaut anymore. But you're saying that the news, um, by watching that, you realize that things were not what 
they could be or appeared to be. Yes. And, but what was really going on? Well, that, but yeah, I just want to comment that what brought me out of the um, mainstream media uh, dive or conditioning, because we sit in front of a television all day and we think what we're hearing is true. Yeah. But when I started to listen to alternative radio, like WBAI in New York, it was like a different angle on the truth, on what the news is. Like even now, Democracy Now! will say, well, what's really going on in Afghanistan? Who are the insurgents? You know, who are these forces? What, in, I mean, the whole war that goes on, what is really Absolutely. going on? What is, what is war really about? Why are people really killing each other? It's not, it's not because they're, um, they attacked, us, it would mean Bin Laden, that whole thing by invading oh, yeah. Iraq, and then that yeah. you know that was just insane. That was yeah, just, well, it's just Iraq had nothing to do with the World Trade Center. I mean, who knows who did? But you know, um, we need. There's a book that my grandfather, I think, had in the like 1920s. It's called "War Is a Racket," and it said that every 20 or 30 years, the country goes to war to build its economy, to build its war machine, to Absolutely. build, to make, to give money to the military industrial complex, which Eisenhower in his last speech in office warned us about. If you, if people watching go to Eisenhower's last speech, he says, beware of the military industrial complex. Hmm. And that is the largest part of the US budget more money goes to building Absolutely. weapons than it does more machines, yes. for people or education or medicine. If we used a lot of that money for health care, which is a human right, uh, everyone, yeah. you know, it's yes. not about having money that yes. you should be taken yeah. care of the best you can. It's it's a human right, like public school education, which mm -hmm. we'll talk and talk about that, which is another program. But anyway, healthcare is a human right, and we're not given yes. that opportunity. And so the programming and the conditioning is so deep, it goes to all levels of our society and our yes. consciousness. And yes. what you're talking about, Val, is waking up to who you re really are and who mm -hmm. we really are are yes. as higher conscious beings. Yes. Yeah, you know, if you go if you go to like let's say um Peru, okay, or um uh somewhere in South America, they're mm -hmm. so akin to ET life forms. It's like a normal thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they see like in Lake Titicata um Lake Titi uh, caca, uh, there's. <laughs> I just wanted you to say caca. <laughs> okay, you can say call it whatever you want. Um, anyway, there's there's uh, U beings. U.S. So, uh, U.S. O's, so the underground water um, ships coming up out of the lake, and this is a normal thing there, and right. they they speak of it as if it's a normal thing, mm -hmm. and. And you know, right. if they start to talk about, you can you can watch some of the presidents. Like I, I, there's a, I remember Obama was asked, like, are there ETs? Are they do ETs really exist? And he said, <laughs> I don't know. He says something so snarky. No, I I, I followed all those uh, presidential um, comments about ETs, and he said we don't have direct proof. Of ET. That's one thing he said on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Um, but, you know, there's a whole running around the question. But, you know, most people are beyond that. They know the government is lying about that. Most, I think, what is it, 75% uh, of the US population believe that there are UFOs of some origin out there. I just want to read uh, some of the comments. Um, you only see what you want to see or been told you can see. Uh, that's Omar, um, path of least resistance. All illness is dis-ease. If the metaphysical self is at dis-ease, right. physical self-experience symptom, when the mind, body, spirit are not in harmony, we enter the state of disharmony. Right, so we're not even taught that. We're not even taught how to be 
in at ease mm -hmm. at ease yes because the key. they're constantly that's feeding that's that's the fear pill that's what it really comes down to from the get-go even being in a school they they want you to fear the teachers you know, back, thank God I didn't live during this day because I would have ran, I would have started beating on the teachers themselves. But they, remember, if why? Because, you know, they used to smack the kids with with the ruler. Oh, oh, oh. On oh, their oh. hands if they weren't paying attention. If I, I, I probably did live through those times and I, and I was definitely a rebel. But if anyone hit me or my daughter for that mm. matter, I mean, mm. I don't know what I would do. Be, but mm -hmm. that's how they just want well, least times have changed about that. That's called abuse, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, it's abuse. But the but they are abusing us. They're not abusing us physically, they're abusing our minds. Right. But they don't know any better. We have to like the revolution or the rebel what it has to start by talking about this, by action, by making people aware. And I think there is a underground movement on the internet. I think that's one of the benefits of the internet. Of course, it can be another conditioning, but for people to gather together and take action, start to languages, start to create a new culture. I think that's what we're trying to do with these podcasts, with these streams yeah. is that we're trying to start a dialogue. And of course it's going on with many people, Linda Moulton Howe, Richard Dolan. These are really brilliant minds talking about another level of reality, but more people have to talk about it. So it becomes a, a common cultural conversation. So when you do see the UFOs and, and you don't block it out, you accept it as a normal fact like they do with indigenous cultures like they do in south america it's like oh yeah so once we open up to that i think the interface of their reality with our realities and our mindset starts to become normalized because right now it's not normal and that's yeah. what people say it's abnormal to have these experiences yes and that's actually one of the things i wanted to say was that when we have these experiences, first of all, we don't need to share it with everyone. That's for mm -hmm. sure. It's but something you can. I don't mind sharing with everyone because if they think, you know, we're a little out of it, that's okay. But yeah, I know what you say. There's some people that you cannot share this stuff with. Yes. Them. Not ready you know, the thing is, is there's always, there's a time and a place to share certain experiences. Now you, people are saying, well, you're a hypocrite. You're sharing with the whole world right here on YouTube, but it's my time and place. I have not talked about that experience for years, years, but now it's my time and place. Um, and once you can talk about it, once you, you should start talking about it is when you really start to integrate it into your own mind where you can say, this is real and this is how i know it's real and because what happens is people start to get confused they mm -hmm. don't really understand what's real what's not real and then that comes off to the other person and then they say oh they're, they're just crazy well it depends who you're talking to of course i don't mind sharing i don't i mean in a way, I don't think there's a time and place. I just like to share and let people form their own opinion because in a way it's a self-reflection of their limitation. You know, that's how I see it. I mean, but more and more that's changing, I feel, it because is. people are are having experiences for one thing there and they're trusting a kind of alternative views of reality because I think you know, there's so much input about the nature. So I think I tell people generally, unless they're really close minded that, well, these are ETs visiting the planet and um, let's just come out. What strange experience have you had in your life that you can't explain? You know, so I ask people referencing their own lives tell me what something you may have never told anyone that was just so confusing and so out of the ordinary that it's stuck in your mind. You never forgot it. And yet, and it didn't make sense, but maybe there's something I can share that can help make sense of it. Well, well, I just want uh, to you, yeah. think, you think that um, a lot of people are open to this, but they're really not. 
No, I know, but I'm not talking to the people sitting on their couch drinking beer watching the football game. No, but even healers, people that had uh, awakening, like they still can't relate to it. It's well, that's true. There are some like, major spiritual teachers. Yes, that absolutely. To. And they and one of them said, "Well, you know, that's just what's the point? What's the big deal? Yeah, it doesn't. What does that have to do with spirituality?" And I said to this person, "It has everything to do with absolutely. spirituality, and it does." Because, because if you think being spiritual is just tuning into your own sense of individual self, you're missing a bigger picture and the opportunity of what creation is all about. If you think it's just about you, then you're limiting the mind and the mind um, is here to keep exploring the unknown. That's the purpose of our incarnational being. It's not just to go within, but it's to go without too. I mean, but to balance that balance of the inward and the outward. But if it's just inward, you miss what's out there. And if it's just outward, you miss what's in here. So being at me, being in balance, and it's very um, much a spiritual awakening. Yes. Well, for me, yes, we are ETs. <laughs> well, yeah, if because you don't we're know not, that, especially the ones that are healers. Meaning their their DNA is more purified, and so they're they're tuning into that ET DNA, where they can connect to those multi dimensional realities, those mm -hmm. sense of higher consciousness, and as as well as that higher intelligence. Right. So that's what ET is. It's these these higher gifts, these higher sensory gifts, or all kinds of you know what the Hindus call is siddhis. You know, it's it's. It, that's ET, and you know most religions are based on on uh, extraterrestrials. They're well, most people, yeah, religions are based on a, a higher entity coming and visiting people yes. and showing them the truth. Yes, yeah, in Africa, just, in but, Africa, they worship the Numos, which are um, mm -hmm. you know the Dogon, the Dogon tribe. They, oh, right, they worship the serious star. But I just want to go to the fact that that to the fact that you said we're ETs because what makes us different than all the other animals that live on this, and we are animals, we're in an animal body, but our consciousness is of another realm. And what makes us different just simply is that we look at the stars. We say, what's out there? I mean, the earliest civilizations have looked at the stars, whether they formed astrology, and patterns that came along with different signs. They looked to the stars and they wondered, what is it? What is our connection to the stars? And you know, the word temple means reflection of the stars, temple, template. And so we are programmed to look outward and to somehow know we're connected to that. We instinctually, intuitively know those lights in the distance, or at least I did, were, those were other homes. They yes. had to be. They, yeah. so, I always yeah. looked, I always used to stare at the stars. That Me was too. Like my favorite pastime. But, you know, people that deny extraterrestrial life form, they're denying their own selves. Right. I think, I think that's true. Of course, we won't convince them of that. They have to be um, they have to have an awakening. And I think the reason these um, UFOs, whatever you want to call them, aren't showing up all the time, they come in spurts and then there's a seed plant and they disappear and then it's time to integrate that if you've seen one and then maybe it'll show up again and then you integrate that. It's that we're slowly being acclimated to the reality that there's something else going on. And um, as we integrate there. that, what? There's something out there. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for saying that again. And we are the thing that's out there. We are not separate from that. We are connected to all there is. That's the stress. That's the disharmony, disconnection, the dis-ease is to real think that we're separate. I mean, you said that, you said that before. Let me just read this other thing. Revolution and disclosure must first take place 
in the inner realm, that's very smart, manic mystic. Um, the inner work must be done in order to change the outer reality. Yeah, if the world is not happy or peaceful, you have to sort of start look, looking within. How is that reflecting a part of you? If that's what you're seeing, the world is whatever it is. But what part are you tuning into? What's, what's impacting you? And if, if you're more at peace, the world may not change, but you'll be at more at peace with the world. You know, the world will be whatever it is. And the more peace that we're at, I think the more peace we radiate to bring out more peace. So yeah, the world is definitely a reflection of yourself. This is one of the things Bashar says, if the world is a total reflection, it says, if you look in the mirror, so the world is like a mirror and the person in the mirror is not smiling, you don't go up to the mirror and try to make that reflection smile. If you smile, the reflection smiles. So it's, it's a little simple, but it's sort of um, true for me when I feel more peaceful, everything is at peace. So this is part of the process of changing our worldviews. And what we've been talking about is how to integrate a bigger reality. The fact that there definitely are, let's just start with UFOs out there coming and going. And if you mind is open, you will start to get uh, telepathic impression that happened to you, right, Val? Yes, uh, you start to have all kinds of experiences and telepathic um, uh, communication. Yes, yeah, it's definitely one of them. But you know, they're able to do so much for you. Um, they work with you. They open your heart. They open up your chakras. They can, they can do so much for you. They can. Sit, uh, send you to different realms. They help you go into space. Whatever you want, really, just as long as there's no fear. Um, I call I call them my friends because they are my friends. They're not. They, I don't see them all the time, and I'm not with them all the time. But when I ask, when I'm asked for them, or when I do something that they're happy with, they they come and see me. But they're also not separate from you. They are being integrated into all of our consciousnesses the awakening of a higher realm is being infiltrated into our beings. So we are, we are ETs, we are extraterrestrials, and we're becoming more galactic in that awareness. So I don't think they're separate because mind to mind communication and the awareness that consciousness is, in a sense, universal is uh, what we're opening up to as we break out of the, our conditioning. Because our consciousnesses are already connected. We don't need the internet to, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, a training wheels for our telepathic communications at the beginning. But when we really tap into who we are, we will be able to have the same type of communication in, in a more cohesive, integrative way. That's mm -hmm. what I feel. But yeah. we're evolving towards that because we've been conditioned for thousands of thousands of years. Thousands be, and thousands. You know, the Tower of Babel, you know, I'm, I'm not that biblical uh, um, a student or even pay much attention, but I think the Tower of Babel, when they tried to build something they had to, they relied on something else. And the true language was the telepathy. This is what, and then when we separated, when we thought we had to go towards the heavens with these artificial structures and start to build um, a speaking language, I think it's okay to have a speaking language, but telepathy is the true language. That was it the is. original language. It is, and then the speaking language is the light language or what some people call speaking in tongues. So that, oh, well, that's something, yes. That's, yes. that's the, the second that's language. language. That's and a language then, of vibration. Yes, and then what happened was then these other languages were sprung off of these different kinds of light languages, such as uh, Aramaic and- um, Well, the ancient languages, yes. Sanskrit, yes. 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 
but real light when i've heard light language and you know it's speaking in tongues light language it's the intention and the impression and the vibration of the of the words that have the deeper meaning than the um individual sounds mm -hmm. and you know where it really points this to and it's like a cultural phenomena do you know charlie chaplin's movie modern times do you know that movie modern times no i don't know the titles but i, well, I modern, yeah well modern times was charlie chaplin's and i like to reference things in terms of collective culture it was his first talking movie it was the first modern times means that you know before modern times was like oh now is the time for movies that had sound and talking and before that chaplin's 20-year career was silent movies he was like the, the star of the silent film era yeah. and modern times was his like upgrade or his his foray into the talking film era but so the first thing he ever says and i should show a clip of this but it's not lined up is this singing waiter and the singing waiter that's the first sound he makes on film his first time he speaks and it's total gibberish the first sound first speech he talks is a singing waiter that's just pure nonsense and he's sort of commenting on the idea that it's not really what you say it's it's the it's the it's the it's the sound of the words the sound of the vibration because he's not making sense in the common language and it's really brilliant that that he's making that sort of comment on talking movies well and it's universal it's what it becomes universal yeah he he does the singing waiter so maybe i'll line that up next time and show that clip so that's this is like he's pointing he's making fun of the idea that we think we have to say these words in order to communicate where he said so much more as a silent actor mm -hmm. yes so so actually just today i i'm a, a big fan of mary magdalene you are good me too <laughs> And and I posted today that um, on my Magdalene um, Instagram, Mary Magdalene Instagram, was that she was the she um, after the after Jesus went to his cave and they were waiting for him during the Pentecost. Mm -hmm. She spoke in light language. How do you know that? Well, it's in the Bible. Oh, it they is. Spoken tongues. Oh, and I didn't. So, know that. Yes. So. So it's um it's interesting because I always say this that that Jesus and Mary were actually extraterrestrial beings and um and this is why they had these cities these gifts and they were still human humanoid and they're still born on Earth but they but they were ET right they were from the ET um an ET race and. And so she spoke light language and they this is the first time that anyone's ever heard this language and she they started calling it in tongues and you know, in tongues yeah, yeah and this has become a big part of the church actually um not the roman catholic church the but other Pentecostal church yeah yes yes and and so now people well it's spirit it's spirit speaking through people and when they spirit speaks through people it's not in words it's in no, pure it's, energy no, well, it's not spirit it's your soul language yeah that's your spirit yes right yeah it's, but, but it's not it can language. be other spirits that do talk in tongues too through yes, people but it's, channeling but it's the true the true light language is your own soul's communication through this through this sound and actually it happened to me after my kundalini awakening i was able to speak in in light language and i think you know a lot of people are starting to wake up to this because that in itself shows us that we we're beyond this you know even language like you were saying even language is a formation to our minds when mm -hmm. you speak yeah. in light, when you speak in light language as you said we follow a vibration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and it just let the vibration flow whatever right. needs to be said and then everything else is really doesn't matter but we've created this construct of language to communicate something 
so that we can intellectualize. Right. That's a good point. And our intellect separates us from reality. Absolutely. Yes. Right. Because then we think we know what things are, you know, and then we lose the essence of what they really are. I just want to tell you a message from Hinnant Observer to you. Hey, M -M sub subscribe to your channel in hopes you'll someday make a video on your above on revolution and disclosure. Uh, please ask her, no, Time Monk says to you, please ask her how she feels about our atoms not touching here in the third dimension, electrons, neutrons, protons, whirl about without touching. We, are, we really are space being, nothing really touches right. It's all energy. That's right. We're That's not, right. it's the illusion that, um, of the physicality yes. that we've been um, another conditioning. Absolutely, you... it's all program. It's a program. So, like, I'm sitting on this chair, but my body is programmed to feel that I'm sitting on this chair. That there's some sort of, um, you know, pressure on my, on my bottom. It's a program of the of the body. Mm -hmm. our, our whole system is a program. Well, but that's why ETs can actually go through walls because yes. it is really empty space. 90% yeah, yeah. of matter of what objects are is empty. And we haven't quite figured that out, but I think we will figure that out. And I think- um, We will. And, you know, I think, you know, it's funny. One of my friends, he's absolutely not into this world at all. But what he says something very interesting the other, the other day was that we're moving into something called, you know, 5G. And then, you know, there'll the be- Internet 5G, the, the Internet. cell phone 5Gs. Yeah. Yes. And then they'll move into 10G, then 20G. Who knows how far it'll go. But Until they kill everyone with that. You basically. Know. But yeah. perhaps this technology movement will also be able to open up portals where we can move into different portals and like, let's say, move it, walk through the portal and move like as I'm here, I can be in China in 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 one second. Yeah, I'm sure that's how sh air, uh, ships travel. Ships go; they open up wormholes in time space and yes. travel instantly. It's not a matter of um, of uh, going from A to B. It's about bending space, folding space. This is what um, Hal Putoff explained to me, actually. You know. So That's what, one thing I love about you, Ellen, is that you always you always have a reference. <laughs> well, I've done research because I, I wanted to be convinced. Thank you. That's why I love talking to you because you well, have a reference. I don't have these references, but you have your instincts, and that's even better. Yeah. Well, I have my experiences and my mm -hmm. instincts, but I feel like that's what makes us a good, um, you know, conversation. But right. what I was going to say was that, you know, 5G, basically, you said that it could kill us, right? Because what it's doing, it's, it's, they're putting up all these different towers to mm -hmm. kind of, um, they break down into our cellular system, our own cellular system. Yeah, and it's awful. funny because, you know, we call them cell phones, right? Mm -hmm. And, and it's tapping into our own cellular system, which could, you know, create cancer or any other disease. Mm -hmm. And essentially, um, speaking of the, the atoms and uh, all this time space matter, once once these this uh, uh, frequency goes into our cellular system, what is it doing? It's doing something that allows for our body to uh, recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And in this, well, I don't know if the five G is doing that, but I think the um, Earth energies, the increased solar activity. Oh I no, think, I'm not saying it on a positive level. <laughs> but I think yes, I know. But there is other influences that I think are upgrading us. I know the negative, the man-made yeah. stuff is trying to degrade. It's it. Yes, but I, but however, I do think, however. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm a very, um, I like to see things on the bright side. Mm -hmm. You know, people always say, you're always posting like negative stuff. No, to me, that's like, an, that's an awakening to kind of push for the positive side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the 5G, even though this is it's going to be terrible, you know, it's going to give us headaches. We're going to feel dizzy, nausea, all kinds of things that we're not going to, 
mm -hmm. be able to deal with if we're not healthy. Um, I think the thing is with 5G is that it's also pushing us to um, to experience these different levels of reality. Well, I think it's maybe pushing us to evolve and build an immune system that will um, upgrade itself. You know, when you, it's like, not that I believe in vaccinations, but it's like when you're given something, your body has to grow stronger, you know. But I also think that there's a higher vibration happening from the galactic sphere. I think the the solar radiation, I think all evolution species change because of an input of, of, of solar radiation, natural radiation that changes the genetics to create new species. And I think yeah. we're being upgraded to this new species because we are in a, a new galactic place, more receptive to the positive radiation that's actually mutating our gene to become greater, to, to evolve, to become superhuman in a sense. I think this is the process. And I think these other forces are trying to counteract this natural yeah. thing. So I want to add to that. So I, my feeling has been for the last 10 years is that human beings need to access the sun. It's one of the most important essentials of our daily. Wait, routine. say that again. Human beings have to what? Access the sun. The sun. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So the sun gives us codes that we have no idea what it, what it's bringing. And it's bringing these ascension codes. Now the planet, people say, oh, the planet's giving us those codes in itself. But the sun is the actual, the transmitter. Of these I codes. agree. I agree. I want to yeah. add to that too, because <laughs> the reason, I mean, did you finish? Uh, uh, but I just want to add that because it's right. The, the reason ETs from other SAR systems are so um, distorting or so disturbing, some of them is because their imprint is from a different solar frequency. So when we meet different beings from different star systems, there's there's a disturbance in the field and we need time for that integration because their frequency of thought is set by a different solar calibration. So the idea, that's why ETs can be disturbing when you meet them because they haven't been uh, encoded with the same solar frequency, meaning other humans, we can resonate with their vibration, but meaning ET, there we need a time of interfacing and adjusting those frequency solar um, codes. That's what came to me. So I think, um, you know, we've uh, kind of covered the whole spectrum here. Oh, wait, I have some questions for you. But no, I liked what you were saying about uh, ascension codes. Can you just finish what, that piece? Because I think well, that was- Well, these ascension good. codes are, are in the sun and are, are being transmitted through the sun. And we need to be more and more in sunlight. Like I know where I live, there's not enough sun, even though today it's a sunny day, but usually there is no sun, especially in the winter time. And so, you know, the sky's gray um, and mm. we, and I, there's no access to the sun. So, People get depressed when there's not yes, enough. Yes, yes. So actually, I'm I'm actually thinking of moving myself into to somewhere where there is more sun. I haven't decided yet where that might be, but it's it'll definitely be in the next year or so because for my own self and as well as for my um, my daughter. And this is not a an intellectual um, idea. I've also been told this ten years ago. Um, through um, my Kundalini awakening as well as uh, ETs. Well, you should come to, I'm here in San Miguel Allende in Mexico. It's, it's been sunny every day. It's warm. I mean, it's just a And the roosters are- <laughs> What's that? The roosters are howling. <laughs> yeah, the roosters, that's true. Right here in the middle of this town, there are roosters and the food is fresh and the people are really that. nice. That's amazing. But actually, oh, 
Let me just say, thank you for your interest for a vast array of content will be created, including the topic, uh, which you relate to me. This is from manic mystic, uh, subscribe to your channel. Uh, wait, there was a question for you. Uh, ET travelers have a very high frequency. That's why they even glow. Wait, someone wanted to know how to get in touch with you, your name. Please repeat her name. Just, Val. just go to valsecrets.com. Right. And your last name is Tignini, mm. right? T-I-G-N-I-N-I. -N -I. How do you say that? <laughs> well, in Italian, you say Tignini. Mm -hmm. um, and you, why don't you just, I mean, yeah, we'll pick up this conversation too. I have to go, but yeah. um, why don't we just, why don't you just talk about what's coming up for you? What um, retreat? Yeah. So, I mean, speaking of Mary Magdalene, I'm having a retreat in France and that's, that's going to be tuning into the divine feminine. Um, as you know, uh, Isis and all these um, ancient beings that are connected to Magdalene as well as to her own self. Um, but, you know, I always take things on a extraterrestrial approach. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, tonight I'm going to Abdi Electricity. That's the guy that actually activated me. And this Where's is that? in New York City. It's Big Toe Yoga in Soho. Big Toe Yoga. What's and, uh, You don't have it. I don't have it. And um, what time is it? It's at 6.30, and Just then the second one. Yoga. That. Actually, Ab Abdi is an incredible energy facilitator. He did, Val had an amazing Kundalini awakening. Yeah. For the first, that woke you up. But anyway, yeah. he's, he's here tonight. Okay. He's here tonight in New York. Well, he's not where you are, but he's here. <laughs> but here in the... Yes. <laughs> yes. And then um, just go to ValSecrets.com. There's so much. I'm going to have a dream time session in May. And then Alan and I are going to be at Contact in the Desert. Right. Contact in the Desert is a really major UFO gathering, but not just experiences. And there will be experience, but a lot of researchers about latest information. And it's become a lot more spiritual over the years. It started out as nuts and bolts. There's ships. And then it's it's really evolved into what does this mean for the evolution of our soul consciousness? So that's happening May 31st to June 3rd in Palm Springs. Uh, look up contactinthedesert.com. I'll be emceeing, doing some talks. I'll be um, also teaching this, helping Russell Tark, who started remote viewing. He's going to be a contact in the desert, uh, give a presentation there. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow, if you're in Mexico anywhere, come to San Miguel. I'm going to be teaching a course and introduction to remote viewing, how to project your mind and consciousness anywhere, because we are really non-local in our being. That's why we have to learn to get over our conditioning to realize what our mind is capable of knowing and being. So the CIA started that program of called remote viewing. I'll go into the whole history. It will do practical applications of actually how to do that. And it's really the key is listening to your intuition because it's talking to you all the time. Also, March 22nd to March 24th, I'll be at the New Life Expo in New York City, uh, speaking about new realities, awakening to ET consciousness uh, in, let's see, when is that next date? April 22nd to the 29th, I'll be in San Mateo at the New Living Expo. And that'll be fun. I'll be speaking with the Hurtox. Oh, I'm also speaking at Lightning in the Bottle in Bakersfield, May 8th to the 13th, just about waking up to this higher consciousness, how to bring it in, how to activate more your ET self, whatever that means. And yes, contact in the desert. You go to my website, uh, newrealities.com. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't. And yeah, please write questions here down below where we can receive the questions and then apply them for the next uh, podcast. And thank you. And how, what's your website again, Val? Valsecrets.com. And what's your YouTube channel? It's a, uh, it's a uh, YouTube backslash Val Secrets. And they should subscribe to Val too. Thanks Val for this. Thank nice you. Oh, I'm going to Tokyo uh, on Monday. So we'll see if we're going to do this there. But we we can try do it to there. If you have internet, you can do it, right? Yeah, I do. We'll we'll just try to sync up there. Let's do it. Alrighty. All right. Talk to you soon.
Bye, Alan. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Thanks for everything.